Hey there do-it-yourself technicians. Today we're going to explore the basics of what apps are and how you would install them on your smartphone. I'm an unashamed iPhone user, so while I'll be discussing the use of apps in general, I'll be using the iOS App Store for my examples. If you're more interested in Android apps, I'll do a video for them next week which will be linked up here when it's released. What is a mobile app? App is just short for application, which is just a program. So a mobile app is a program installed on a mobile device or smartphone. Apps usually just do one thing. A web browsing app allows you to browse the web. A mail app is used to check and send emails. A calendar app is there to check your calendar and it put entries in. A stocks app will allow you to get info and prices on different stocks. And a banking app will let you do your online banking and possibly find a branch or something like that. They're all just doing that one specific thing and doing it hopefully really well. You can't check the weather from a Maps app. It's just not what it's designed for. And in our crazy multitasking world where we're always trying to do four things at once, to me, it's a welcome form of focus. That's not to say there isn't any interaction between apps. There is, and there needs to be. For example, you take a photo with the camera app, but then it stores it in the Photos app. But a photo isn't that much good if it just stays on your phone. So down the bottom we have this icon for sharing. When I press the share button on a photo on my phone, it gives me a range of things that I can do with that photo. First it gives me a list of all of the people I've been messaging recently who I might want to send that photo to. Next it gives me a range of apps I might want to use that photo in. Airdrop to send it to another Apple user nearby. Messages to text it to someone. Mail to email it to someone. Reminders to add a visual reminder for something I need to do. Hangouts to send it via the Google Chat program. Or Evernote to store it in a note there. I can use Flickr to share it on the photo sharing site for everyone to see. Next is Google Keep and a More button where I can select even more apps. Mostly social apps where it makes sense or a photo editing app. For example, I can't share a photo with my weather app because that simply doesn't make sense, so it's not available as an option. If I swipe up, there are even more options. I can copy it to the clipboard, I can add it to an album, or make a duplicate of it. I can hide it, show it in a slideshow, or airplay it to a properly equipped TV or something similar. I can set it as my phone's wallpaper, or use it to make a watch face for an Apple Watch. Save it to my phone's storage, or apply it as the photo for a contact. I've also got options there to print it or edit it in Sketch, one of my photo processing apps. I can save it on a WordPress web page or upload it to my Dropbox. I can even look at the geolocation information to find out where the photo was taken. There's another option at the bottom to edit these actions, although it's basically just about turning some of the options off if you don't use them. So now we know what apps are and how to share between them. Apple devices come with a range of useful apps, but there are literally millions more available in the App Store. So how do we get them? We find them in the App Store app. But before we leap into the App Store, I want to talk first a little bit about money. Some apps cost money, others are free. This should be a fairly clear distinction, but it does get a bit blurred in some situations. Designing, developing and writing an app takes time, and people usually want to be paid for that, which makes sense. If you buy an app in the App Store for $3, Apple keeps 30%, or basically a dollar, and the other $2 goes to the person who wrote the app. Now $2 isn't a lot, but there are literally millions of people buying things in the App Store. So if half a million people buy an app that you get $2 for, that's a cool million dollars. If you can write something that's good enough for half a million people to want to buy it. A bank might use a different model, where they pay their developers in-house to design the app, and then make it freely available to their customers. Similarly, Netflix have a free app, but you need to have a Netflix subscription in order to be able to use it. Some apps are full of ads, and the developer gets paid when you click on the ads, and they hope that enough people click on the ads to make it worth their while. Another form of payment is an in-app purchase, where you actually purchase something inside the app, but still through the App Store. For example, you might pay to remove the ads in an ad laid an app. The developer then gets paid and you don't get any ads. Win-win. Other in-app purchases might be things like an extra set of brushes for a painting app, or extra lives or resources in a game of some sort. The options are basically limitless. 
Like many things on the iPhone, the App Store requires an Apple ID, usually linked to either a credit card or gift cards. There's also restrictions built in where kids can request apps or in-app purchases, but they have to be approved by an adult with the credit card. So let's look at the App Store itself. This is what the App Store looks like in December of 2019. It gets revised every now and again, but even if it looks a bit different, I'm sure you'll be able to find all of the things that I'm showing you today. The home page or today page holds various apps or groups of apps that Apple are recommending today, including an app of the day, an ad for the Apple Arcade subscription, then a selection of business apps, transport apps, and life hacking apps. As the name suggests, most of these change pretty much every day. The next section may well be the largest, with millions or possibly tens of millions of games. The rest is a mixture of Apple's favourites and recommendations based on games that I've bought before. There are lists of the top paid and free games, and then a section with other popular game categories. The next is a generic apps tab, listing Apple's favourites, popular apps, seasonal apps, trending apps, and various other categories based on what I've picked in the past, and then some top categories. The next tab, Apple Arcade, is a game service from Apple that allows you to pay $7.99 Australian dollars for a monthly subscription to over a hundred different games that they've had specifically designed for the platform. I'll do a review of this in the next couple of weeks and there'll be a link up here. The last tab is a search tab where, not surprisingly, you can search for whatever app as long as you know the name, the developer, or something that might be in the description of the app. The final section is kind of hidden. You have to tap on your Apple ID logo to get into the account section where you can find all of your purchased apps, your personalization recommendation settings, and a list of apps that require updating or have been updated recently. Buying an app is as simple as clicking the get or buy button. You'll have to log in either with your iTunes password or your fingerprint if you've got that registered and then wait for the app to download. This may take a few seconds or a few minutes depending on the size of the download and the speed of your internet connection. Once the app is downloaded and installed, you click the open button and you're off on your way using your new app. Congratulations. I hope that was helpful for you. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite app is or maybe your favorite one in a couple of different categories. I know I've got lots that I'll share with you over the coming weeks. The Tech Doctor exists to help you become your own technician and navigate your technology maze. You can subscribe to the channel here or subscribe to our mailing list up here. There's also some videos you may not have seen here and here. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.